Hello everybody, this is C.J. Wiley <clears throat> for more Adventures on the Road. I hope you've seen the last podcast with Keith McCready and uh, the one I did with Chew Tobacco was uh, also a lot of fun, but a lot of uh, names and, and stories have come up as a result of those podcasts because, you know, especially Keith and I knew a lot of the same players. Chew Tobacco, uh, I never crossed paths with him on the road, even though I heard about him, but, uh, you know, what he said to me was that, uh, you know, there was a, a disagreement among people back in, like, the early 90s, this was like 91, who was the best uh, money player? Was it uh, Mark Tad or myself? And uh, I remember when that came up, he won the all-around tournament in uh, L.A., Mark Tad did. Tadami is his last name, I believe. And uh, he still plays a little bit. Uh, I don't know if he's kept his game up, but I heard he was out shooting a little bit. But this was, uh, you know, 32 years ago. So he had just beat Jose Perica who was also, you know, always named as one of the top money players. And, of course, I've always given accolades to Buddy Hall and, uh, you know, your Mike Siegels and players like that. But they were more tournament-oriented, and we were gambling-oriented. So, uh, you know, endurance had a lot to do with it. You know, playing in a tournament, you play like a race to 11. I mean, now they're playing like races to 7 or races to (laughs) 4. We always said 11 wasn't enough, so the tour that I had, the Professional Q Sports Association, we went to uh, 13, or excuse me, 15. That's when Earl ran those 11 racks in a row, was racing to uh, 15 against Nick Menino. So, um, but when you're playing the gambling matches, like I had just played a, a long set actually two sets with Reed Pierce before I went out to play Mark Tad. And uh, we would put up, we'd play 10 ahead where somebody had to get 10 games ahead. We'd put up two sets, not one, but two sets. So somebody had to win 20 ahead to win. Or you could break even. Or the guy could keep playing and, uh, you know, you could, usually if we, broke even two 10 ahead sets then we just play one more 10 ahead set and we might double the bet because by that time uh, you know the players are probably going to be both in dead stroke and, and playing at a super high level so Las Vegas is where I chose to play uh, Mark Tad and I think it was the Q Club I'm not real sure the place was packed uh, Fat Boy, when we were in London, was talking about that match. He said that he watched it. I think Johnny Archer uh, was who he was with. But, you know, when I was playing those big matches, I was pretty much in a zone all the time. So I remember playing, but, but it's, you know, it was more like a dream state that I was in. And that's, uh, you know, my advantage was... I learned how to get into that that dead stroke, you know, pretty much on call. And uh, when I started playing on ESPN, I had to adjust it a little bit because I had to be able to snap out of it and, like, talk to the camera and and people. You know, I had had to show some personality, and then I could snap right back into it. I didn't do that when I was gambling. I just stayed in it. (laughs) So I would rarely acknowledge my opponent or... uh, I wouldn't feel anything, you know, whether I made the shots or didn't make the shots. I I pretty much had the same uh, mental state all the time. So we played uh, 10 ahead for 10,000. Mark, Tad, and I did. And uh, I remember warming up, he was uh, hitting everything really hard. And I mean, like, hit one so hard he knocked it off the table. And I went up, I was like, what are you doing? He looked at me and said, you wouldn't understand. (laughs) And I was like, oh, really? Okay. So so we played the 10-ahead set, 
and I was playing about as good as I could possibly play. Uh, Fat Boy said I didn't make any position errors and didn't miss any balls the whole time we played. I also made some jump shots with a full cue that I do remember those and like drew my cue ball back and I mean I was really kind of in another world. So um, the first set took about two and a half hours and I won the 10 ahead set. So now he wants to play another set but he has to get the other, we had to put the money up so he had to get the other 10,000. So it took about two hours before uh, he got the money down there. So then we played another 10 ahead set and I beat him that set in less than an hour, if my memory serves me correct. It was really fast. Uh, like I said, <clears throat> I was playing uh, as good as I could possibly play at that time. And, you know, he was too. He just didn't get a chance to, uh, to play as much as I did. You know, those matches could go either way. I mean, I'm not saying he couldn't have won on another day, but he didn't. And, you know, and, and never wanted to play again, so... That's when I ended up going professional because that was really my last uh, my last big gambling match where I knew I wasn't going to get to play anymore. I mean, people at that time just uh, they just didn't want to play me. I had too much money behind me, and you know you'd have to beat me for at least twenty or thirty hours <laughs> before I was going to quit. So uh, it was tough to maintain that high level for that long, but, uh, you know, I've been involved in the martial arts and an athlete most of my life, so, in the gambling, uh, the, the endurance definitely plays a factor, and, uh, I actually enjoyed it, <laughs> you know, I would get into such a, a state mentally that, I mean, I couldn't even tell how much time had went by, sometimes I would play a match that would, be 10 or 12 hours and it seemed to me like it was like two or three hours I, I just uh when you get that deep into a zone and and you know I, I teach how to get into that zone it takes practice but uh there are some techniques especially one self-hypnosis technique that I use that's uh probably the best one that's available uh Dr. Milton Erickson I've got a degree in Ericksonian hypnosis and his wife came up with this uh self-hypnosis technique and I describe it in one of my videos but uh and if you want to uh you know learn about that uh type of stuff those videos are at www.cjwiley.com or masteringpocketbillards.com and uh you can you can join my uh, private membership and uh, and have access to that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm pulling up to the pool room here in Sanford, uh, North Carolina. He's not open, but uh, I got a key. <laughs> anyway, till next time, this is CJ. Hope you're having a great day, and uh, the game is the teacher. <laughs>